Well, hey everyone, how's it going? So there needs to be some clarification here because um, I do have a uh, commenter who does not understand how the power jack converters work. Uh, at no time do they output, at least for the United States, in a split phase environment, which is what we have here in the States. At no time does the transformer actually put out more than 120 volts as it's supposed to, which is exactly emulating what is coming into your breaker panel, okay? So I will demonstrate here. This is a transformer that is out of a 15 kilowatt unit, the same as that I tested. It is a zero to 17 volts in with a zero to 230 volts out. So why did they say 230 volts? That's 230 volts total between the two. That does not mean that a single winding in here goes all the way up to 230 volts. Now, power jack jacks that up just a little bit, no pun intended, in order to get your 240. And the brand new units, the, the brand new 2018 units, have a variable output. So the only thing that happens is the input is either increased or decreased, all right? So for this demonstration, I'm putting in about 17 volts on my Variac that I have up here, and I will show you. So before I energize it, you have L2, which is right here, this black wire here. L1 is actually this wire here, and then this is your ground, okay? Now, power jack inverters use a floating ground, so... You can combine these two here to get 240 volts. That's why that sticker is there that says 240. Well, 230 actually. You combine these two, you get 230. Now, if you look right here, there's actually a sensor on this wire right here that monitors the uh, output on this wire. It does not monitor the voltage. It, out, it monitors exclusively the amperage coming out. There's a hall sensor right here. Now, if this were plugged into this board right here, which I can also show you. This board right here is the control board. If you look right here, this says, and I'll flip it upside down for you. This says 220 volts. There is not 220 volts coming out of this line right here. That is the L1 input, but it has the hall sensor on there, which is why they put the 220 volts. The CPU will actually see and do the math and whatever, and it'll try to determine approximately how much in 220 volts or 240 you would actually be using in the combination. So it is not a 240 volt, 220 volt output. This transformer does not put out more than that. In fact, it would start to burn it up if I went any higher than that. Right now, I've got it set to about 17 um, volts. That's on the input side, okay? So it's the same as your battery being hooked up to it, whatever. It's about 17 volts. So I got my, uh, my uh, multimeter here. So you can see the voltage that's up there. We'll go ahead and connect ground to L1. 132 volts, okay? That's not 240 volts. Let's go up to L2, 121 volts. That is not 240 volts. Let's go ahead and connect the two together. And look at that. You get the 240 volts, or 255 here. But that's how it is. This is exactly how it's set up for the North American market. I'm going to turn this off so I don't accidentally touch these. But you've got one leg, L2 one leg, L1, and then here's your ground right here. So they emulate the power grid exactly. Now, I know the details you're talking about with the center tap and not using center tap, and that's how you get voltage. However, this transformer is not wound like that. The transformer does not ever put out, unless you were to crank up the input voltage on it, the transformer itself does not ever put out more than 120 volts, around 120 volts again, it all depends on battery voltage, et cetera, et cetera. Things can affect that, but let's just say 120 volts, okay? So when they connect this transformer to the control board, and this is the way it is for all of the split phase inverters 
for power jack. When they connect this green wire here to this post right here, it says 220, but it's not actually 220. In order for them to get 220 volts to the plug that's on the front, all they do is they run two wires. They literally combine two wires from this post right here up to the plug, all right? But when you're looking, I'll show you, because I happen to have one right here in my office. I won't be cutting this video. This is just a quick raw video. Okay, so here's the front panel right here. You got two LCD screens here, okay? This second LCD screen actually uses a computer algorithm to assume how much you're using if you are using the 220 volt plug, which is right here. It's just a trick of the wiring on the back here. It is just a trick of the wiring in order to get 240 volts out of this plug here. They just simply do the combination between the two legs here in order to get that high voltage. That's it. There is not a single output on this that will actually give that to you. And all that secondary LCD screen is is a carryover from the European um, uh, grid where they just decided that for the American ones they were not going to create two individual 120 volt uh LCD screen so that you can monitor them individually. So when I did my test, when I actually did my test, again, pretty much the same transformer. You can see there's a hall type sensor that's right there. Well, there's another one that goes on this leg here, okay? In order for me to accurately measure, I could not count on the single hall sensor that is on this leg because it was only going to read one half of my breaker box. That's all it was going to do. So all I did, the only thing that I did was I took the hall sensor that was on L2 and I ran this wire here, L1, into the same sensor. It's a very large sensor. I don't happen, I don't have one here on my bench right now. Nope, doesn't look like it. But I was looking for one so that I could show you. Yeah, I don't have one here right now, but it's a single large hall type sensor. And all they did was run the two together. Again, they are not different voltages, okay? They are basically the same course. You get a little bit of winding. Maybe there's an extra winding or two that might bump it up or bring it down a little bit between the two. But this is a twin winding uh, transformer. So that's all it's doing. It, it's It's simple. And it doesn't have to be complicated. And, you know, the conversation that I have that I'm, you know, getting into right now with this guy is showing that because the voltages are different, then it's going to be a different reading. No, look, I tested it myself. I turned on the items that I have in the house myself. I did this. I know approximately how much they use. And it was right in line with what the LCD screen was reading, okay? That's it. All right. There's no tricks. There's no whatever. I wasn't doing anything to move the LCD screen around. That was it. All they did was take the 120 volt, the the single um, LCD screen. I'll show you again because I want this clear. This screen right here monitored by this hall sensor right here. Okay. This screen right here, monitored by the all the other hall sensor, which I don't have on here because it's much larger, so it falls off. This one actually won't come off because of the uh, the uh, the end connector. Okay, so all I did was I took both of these wires here, ran it through the hall sensor that is red on this one right here. That's it. That's all I did. The 220 volts you see coming out of here is not a reading from the hall sensor. It is just the CPU saying that it's reading both of those together and that's what they equal is 200 and whatever volts, okay? I will show you again because this seems to be very confusing for some people. So I'm gonna try to do this again. Here we go. Okay, I gotta reset this because it was on for too long. 
Okay, let's try this again. You can see we got basically a zero line right here. So I'm going to go ahead and power on. I want to make sure. Oh, let's wrap this back around here. I'm trying to do this with the camera. I'm bending this wire up here like that. So that's close enough. So let's try this again. Just so that you can be totally clear about this. It does not work the way that you think it works. And I want to be clear and blunt about it. So, ground. Which is this wire, this wire right here. And we will touch L1. If I can reach it. I want to make sure this doesn't arc against something. L1. 132 volts, 132 approximately. Again, it's going to vary just a little bit. In fact, I found that L1 actually always consistently puts out just a little bit more than L2. Okay, now let's go up to L2. Look at that, 122 volts. Okay, so once again, this is not a trick. This is not something crazy that I'm doing or anything else. Oops, not camera over here. This is just simply me showing you exactly how the test worked. The CPU just determines the voltage because it just takes the two and combines them. It literally just does that. Okay, it takes both of the, there's a voltage sensor on uh, both sides that is actually on this board right here. All it does is take the output voltage of L2, output voltage of L1, and combines the two. That's it. That's all it does. It's not actually putting out, this transformer is not actually putting out 100 or 240 volts, okay? In order for them to get that 240 volt plug to actually work, all they do is they just use... They, they patch the two together at the plug, okay? You've got 120 volts here on this 220 right here. And then the other input, which is on the other side right here, again, 120 volts, okay? Combining the two, they simply patch the two together. It's this one down here, not that one. They patch the two together. That's how they get that plug energized to... 240 volts. That's it. That's all it is. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question because it's so hard to type all this information out. You can see now live, you can see how I tested this, how I showed you that these, this is what it outputs. Okay. There's no trickery here. You can see what it outputs, what these two here output 120 volts, 120 volts ground. That's it. That's all it is, all right? So all I did, again, let me repeat, the only thing I did was I put these two wires through the same hall sensor that was on the 120 volt screen. That's it, that's all I did. That way you can read the amperage out of this one, the amperage out of this one, combine the two. Go ahead and try it sometime, actually, if you want to. If you got two wires that have one amp on one, six amps on the other, you put them both through the same hall sensor, they're gonna read seven amps or approximately seven amps. It's the same voltage or very close. So yes, that's how it is. And the accuracy of these inverters usually comes from where the hall sensor is actually placed on the wire itself. You can actually take this hall sensor right here. You can actually take this thing and you can move it around like that, okay? And it'll give you a slightly different reading all around. They are off by, I found, about 5%, the sensors. But um, that's the CPU's problem. This hall sensor, like I said, you can move it all over the place. And it's going to give you a slightly, it's just a magnetic field that it's reading. That's it. So there, hopefully that explains it. And if you have any more questions or would like to disagree with me on this, this is a North American Transformer split phase it is a single phase split in half and if you look at it each phase is 180 degrees out of phase they meet they go they meet they go a 240 volt appliance simply uses both at the same exact time 
like this. That's it. That's all it does, okay? No trickery here, nothing. All I did was, again, I just read both of these lines to get how much the inverter was actually putting out. So, again, if you have any questions, let me know. Take care.